Mr. President, I'm calling you to say that I have succeeded in forming a government with all the factions. All of them together, they signed for me. So I'm calling to inform you that I have succeeded in forming a government. Let's go to West Jerusalem and speak to Dan Dyker, who's a fellow at the Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs. Dan, thanks so much indeed for joining us. Uh, do you see any reason the Knesset would not approve this coalition? Well, it's far from sure that the Knesset would approve the coalition because the Knesset is split down the middle. Um, as we speak here on TRT, uh, the prospective coalition only has about 60 votes out of the 120 mandates in the Knesset. So it remains to be seen if, um, uh, if prospective Prime Minister Bennett and alternative prospective Prime Minister uh, Yair Lapid will succeed in getting that 61, uh, 61 nods, if you will, 61 fingers in the Knesset uh, to approve the coalition deal. OK, let's imagine that the Knesset does approve it. Do you find it at all strange that Yair Lapid, whose party has the most seats in this coalition, is almost putting himself behind Naftali Bennett? Because you'd have Bennett as PM for two years, and then Lapid for two years, but presumably such a coalition may not even serve out its whole term. Well, well, I'll tell you a secret. Um, your question is very well put, and many people are having this discussion in Jerusalem and uh, in Istanbul and around the world, in Europe and so on. But I can say that, uh, you know, uh, Naftali Bennett is a social liberal and he is a, a foreign policy hardliner. And uh, Mr. Um, and Mr. Lapid, who had 17 mandates, knew that the only way they could make this coalition work is to give Mr. Bennett the first try or the first, uh, uh, you know, two years as prime minister, because he was really the kingmaker in these elections. But I think uh, my sense is that there, even though for the first time in Middle Eastern history, an Israeli coalition is being joined by the United Arab List, an Islamic party, uh, which really shows you that we're living in a new Middle East. Uh, both uh, Mr. Lapid has shown a tremendous amount of leadership by placing himself second and allowing Mr. Bennett uh, to take the reins. And it's another, it's really another, um, I would say, marker and credit also to Mansour Abbas, uh, you know, head of this Ram, uh, uh, four, part, four uh, seat Ram party, that he would join his Jewish Zionist um, uh, cohorts and uh, 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 fellow members of Knesset in this coalition. I believe that we're in a new era in the Middle East. This is a Middle East where Muslims and Jews can get along. This is the Middle East of the Abraham Accords. It's a Middle East in which Arabs in Israel are looking for greater normalization and which even right-wing nationalists like Mr. Bennett are extending their hands in peace to Arab uh, parties in the Knesset. So I think we're at a real watershed moment in the Middle East. Dan, I wanted to ask you exactly about that, about Mansour Abbas and the United Arab List. I mean, those negotiations, especially between Bennett and Abbas, they must have been really difficult. I mean, I spoke to Naftali Bennett about two months ago, and he was, as you would expect, extremely hard line in terms of Israel's relationship with the Palestinians. So does the United Arab Party List really, as you're indicating, make this coalition stronger? Over the... Uh, oh, well... Uh, it's a very complex question and we have very little time, but let me say it this way. Uh, Dr. Abbas has taken a completely different line than his fellow members of Knesset and the Arab parties. He's moved away from Palestinian nationalism in the West Bank and Gaza. He's moved in favor of civic and civil um, normalization and, um, and his desire to help the almost 2 million Arab citizens of Israel improve, move up the uh, career ladders, move up the social ladders, get more infrastructure, and really integrate um, with, um, with uh, the, the Israeli body politic in a greater way that's ever happened before. Having said that, it is a real test if the, if the Iran-Bak Hamas is going to start another uh, round of uh, rocket assault, it will remain to be seen whether Mr. Abbas can withstand that pressure um, you know, from an Arab constituency in an Arab world of 350 million people in this region and stay in the coalition. And as you and I know, the coalition's a fragile one with only 61 potential mandates. So there are a lot of question marks, but I will say, and I want the, the very good people of Turkey and around the world to understand that the, in Israel, there is a major shift going on in the, uh, in the Arab sector towards greater civic um, uh, uh, cooperation, normalization, integration, 
And I think that the Jewish public is very much in, fav in, in, in favor of that, notwithstanding the real bumps on the road with the recent violence throughout Israel that was inspired by the Hamas and inspired by the Iranian regime. But I do think we're at a watershed moment that, that could make Israel, um, continue to make Israel an integrated partner in the larger Arab Middle East. Dan, you're right. It's complicated, but you put it extremely well and concisely, and we appreciate that. Thanks so much indeed. Dan Dyker in West Jerusalem.